head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Quirky Circuits. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about those electrical currents going wild in those different circuit boards. And we're going to be making dogs walk and cats go vacuum up things. Today we're talking about Quirky Circuits. This is by Plaid Hat Games. This is a cooperative style game. I like to call it The Mind Meets Bomb Squad. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Quirky Circuits, you're gonna be using cooperatively one of these four robots like Gizmo, Rover, Twirl, or Lefty. And each of those robots comes with their own deck that has their own movements in it. Now the game comes with this scenario book. There's 24 different scenarios in this book and each scenario is gonna have you use one of those four different robots that we just talked about. Now each scenario comes with its own name like the first one's Dust Bunnies and it comes with a section of specific rules for this scenario. And then the opposite page actually has the board for that scenario and it's all set up. Like right now we have these dust bunnies and Gizmo needs to be able to run over, it's a vacuum, and suck up all these dust bunnies and get back to the charging station before all the battery runs out. Now each robot comes with a little tile here that tells you its sort of special ability. Like when Gizmo collides with an obstacle or barrier, it stops its movement and rotates left. So each of the robots work differently. It also tells you how many of each of the types of cards there are. Some cards will have you move forward or backwards or turn to the right or turn to the left, move forward twice turn around or move forward three times for example and it tells you how many cards of each of those are in the deck for gizmo now the deck of those cards will be shuffled and each player will get a certain amount of cards depending on the amount of players so how it works is each player at any given time can play a card face down there's no turn order here so you can place a card now the trick is you cannot say anything to anybody similar to sort of the game called the mind if you've ever played it players are playing card but you're programming cards face down now this player, let's say, plays this card. This tells you, the backside, that it's moving, either forwards or backwards, but you don't know how far. Then let's say uh, this player immediately plays a turn card, like that, before anybody else can play. So everyone might be looking at this going, okay, they're trying to program this to pick up all the things. Uh, they went here and then they did a turn. So maybe they moved three and they turned. Um, you know, if, if they just played this card down here, somebody else might go, hmm, okay, let's move forward again. Um, and then players will play maybe a turn card or things like that. So players will continue playing cards in any order until at least five have been played, but you can play more if you want. So I'm just gonna go like this, just to show you just a complete random one to show you how it would react. Now you can do more than five, but once everyone's decided to stop, then you resolve them. Okay, so let's say we resolve these. This one goes, oh, three forward. It actually also shows you here. So we go one, two, three, and all three of these basically get collected. They just get put off the board. That's what you're trying to do is collect all of these. So we've got three here. The next one goes, ooh, going backward. So the next player played this. This one is a turn. So we turn to the left. So you go like this. This one is a move forward one. Now, if this had been moved forward more than one, you would stop and then because Gizmo's thing has it turned left, you can do that. And you can actually kind of use that to help you turn when needed uh, if you have a good idea where Gizmo is. But again, you don't always know what other people are thinking. Let's say this one said turn, and this is going to turn to the right. So after the first round, actually it's not terrible. You're actually there. And then what would happen is these cards would all get shuffled and placed at the bottom of the deck of the cards that weren't yet used because cards are passed around let's say there's a deck these would get shuffled placed at the bottom of the deck and then players would get cards so that they have you know a full hand at the end of the round gizmo's battery goes down by one and simply what you're trying to do is get all the dust bunnies and get back to the charger before the end of that many rounds essentially if, if you do then you've won the scenario if not well you play it again now the next scenario there's you know a piano that you can't move around these yellow lines you can never move around however if you hit one of these now that has a vase it will break and shatter and it actually goes one space uh, following the movement of the way that the gizmo was moving. But you also have to suck up the debris in order to win the goal as well as all the dust bunnies. So it gives you, you know, another layer of difficulty. I'll show you one more level here. It ramps things up a little bit more. These dotted lines are chairs. And if gizmo ever moves through the chairs going two or three, it halts its movement, meaning you have to kind of go around the chair slowly. If you hit the chair fast, you just stop. 
Also, the bigger thing here is there's some special yellow cards that are given, and they have question marks. You can't tell what's on the back of these. However, if a player has one of these, the first card that they play, again, you can play in any order, but the first card they play has to be one of these. And you know that there's, you know, two lefts and a move forward twice. So if someone plays one of those, you know it's one of those three cards. But again, forcing you to play one of these as your first card gives the game an interesting twist. Now again, there's a handful of scenarios for each robot, and they all work differently, like Twirl. Uh, if Twirl collides, the battery goes down. Also, Twirl, if they move forward uh, two, then she gains momentum and will continue to move in that direction on her next turn. And she's also able to kind of, has cards that sort of picks things up and drops them off, and there's different goals that she'll have during the different scenarios. And Rover itself uh, has some interesting things where you have some lines like this and arrows and Rover actually needs to jump to be able to go over that. Rover's going to be running around and picking up and dropping off objects as well. And Lefty is a sushi chef and it uses both hands. It's going to be grabbing food and trying to deliver food. It's trying to make sure none of the food goes into the sink. But again, there's multiple scenarios for each of the robots. All right, well, there's Quirky Circuits. Uh, I got a first chance to play this at origins way early this year and then it kind of had a, a, a soft release at gen con and so i've had a lot of time to spend with the game so let me tell you what i liked about it first of all adorable artwork everyone i played this with is looking at the card and they're like oh my gosh this is just so cute i just love this it just looks so nice definitely a positive thing that draws you right to the art is great in this game I call this the Mind Meets Bomb Squad because you're cooperatively playing cards. Instead of numbers, you're trying to actually figure out which way to make the different robot go. But with this twist is you can't really see what everyone else is doing. And then you flip them over and then you're moving around. Kind of like the cooperative game Bob Squad where you're, you are cooperatively programming and you are moving around different scenario boards and you're trying to pick up and deliver and do things like that. So it's very similar to that. But Bomb Squad uses more of a Hanabi mechanism where you're telling people about the cards they can't see, where here it uses the mind, where everyone's just kind of playing things. Uh, I love the mind. I love Bomb Squad. I love the mind. And this game takes that sort of mind and makes it like a really full experience game. More on that later. But I love that aspect of this. I love the group think, uh, how you're all trying to think together. And then the first time you play this, you're probably going to fail horribly. But as you play with the same group over and over and over, you get better and better and better. And you learn each other's tendencies, you learn each other's timings. Uh, you just get better. And that's always fun in the game to do that because the, the scenarios get more difficult. So as you get better, they still feel as hard, but you're actually doing a lot better. Uh, this game has huge explosions when the group is all on the same page. And it's like, oh, we did this. Yay, we did this. Oh, we did this. Yes, we did this. Oh, we went backwards. You know, and it's just like, it's really fun to see when you all get on the same page and you're all high-fiving each other. Uh, this has highs like the mind does. You know, like if you play a bunch of cards that are right in a row and everyone's like, oh, you know, this has that as well. But this is preceded by anticipation because you're not really sure what's going on. And as you're like flipping over the cards, like, oh, oh, good. Someone played this one. Oh, and the, or someone flips, flips over a card like, uh-oh. The cards I play later are going to totally screw us up. You know, and it has that anticipation as you're flipping the cards. That's really fun. Those yellow cards are cool. That you have to play those first and you, if you have them. So that really throws a monkey wrench in the whole strategy of the game. I love that. The different robots, cool. As you go through the different ones, the four different robots, uh, they all have sort of different abilities and different the scenarios sort of cater to those abilities, which is fun. Which means this is going to be easily expandable, I think. You know, come up with, uh, you know, more robots, more scenarios, and you've got sort of a lot of the tokens. And I really think this will, you know, you'll be able to expand on this pretty easily. Even if you back to the mind, even if you don't like the mind, you might like this uh, because if you didn't like the mind because you just thought it was so weird and just this and that, this is less weird than the mind, but uses that core mechanism. So if you didn't like the mind, I would say still try this one out because it's really fun. Negative side of things. Uh, small things, because I really love this game, is the distribution of those yellow cards should be on the player aid for each robot because you should be able to know what those are so when players have them you know what the possibilities are sure you just kind of like look at the rule book and you can tell and you can kind of remember that but be, it would have been nice to have that on the player aid also uh, i've played this enough that even now you know as i'm sh the, sh the cards get shuffled very often i mean pretty much every round and so because of the amount of shuffling um the cards are starting to sort of like stick to each other a little bit so I think you'll need to really sleeve this due to the amount of shuffling. And I don't typically sleeve games, but I'm going to want to do that for this one. 
Uh, also, if you don't like programming, I don't think this is going to be the game for you. That's going to be a negative because if you don't like programming and things doing things that you're not expecting and it screws up your whole program, this is even worse with that because now you've got other players programming and none of you can talk. So you might have a good idea and someone else thinks you did something else and the whole thing screwed up. If you don't like that aspect, you're not going to like this game. But, but for most uh, people that don't mind programming or even like it, you're going to love this game. This is one of my favorite games that I've played all year. It's a great family game, great cooperative game, and I highly recommend it. And because of that, I'm going to be adding it to my gaming library, which doesn't happen too often anymore. And because of that, I'm going to give it a saxophone serenade. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Hit it. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear, it's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.